Heal yourself. How do you heal yourself? <laughs> nice question. Okay. So picking it up from what where Reverend left off nice about the need for you to do something about it. Okay. Usually I notice three approaches people are, have towards their pain mm. or towards bad experiences. Mm. 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 Firstly, there are people who decide I'm just gonna bury it. Mm. 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 Less by God, just by God. neglect it and That's pretend all. it's not happened. Good. Then there are those who they would acknowledge it, something has happened to me. But you know what? I'll sidestep it. Mm. I'll not address it. Mm. I've acknowledged it happened. Mm. Then there are those who would decide that, look, this is what's happened to me. It's turned me into something that I am not. I would need to make a change. It starts off from the approach that you are taking. Mm. If you decide to just bury it, mm. as you bury it, one day it will surface, it will show up. If you decide to acknowledge but sidestep it, it would now become a trigger in future instances. That's it. the next person you're going to be relating with will not appreciate and understand because you are coming from a certain background of trauma. But if you choose to use the third approach that you would have to set back there and look at what is it that went on? How did it hurt you? Mm. How has it changed you from who you are? Has a, how has it altered you from who you aspire to be? That marks the beginning of the healing process. Mm. There are times you may not be able to heal solely by yourself. Mm. You would need external help. Right. Counselors. Because when a person is ill, they know they are ill. They are the ones that are feeling the pain. And sometimes in the midst of pain, a lot of the times, the attention and the focus of the person is solely on their pain. Mm. And they don't see any other thing. But it takes one who is seated outside as a doctor who would ask you questions. Where are you feeling the pain? How did the pain mm. come about? So who is the right person to talk to? Good. Who is the right person to talk to? I always say that when it comes to matters of pain and relationship, don't talk to people who are not in a position to have influence in the situation. Let me give a, a okay. case in point. I'm relating with Reverend. Mm -hmm. We are good friends. Yeah. Something has gone on. It hurts me terribly. You are probably a third friend. Then I come to you, Rosalind. Can you imagine this is what Reverend has done and all that? The question I'm asking myself is, is Rosalind in a position to be able to even sit Reverend down and, and point have a word and have a word with him? Mm. Does Ro Rosalind have that level of influence mm. and authority to be able to do that? If she doesn't, it's just a waste of time. You're gossiping. Yeah. Mm. The reason being that man has a conscience and it is the voice of authority that rules a man's conscience that actually determines what the man will do. Mm. So if you noticed, for instance, when marriages are being contracted, there's the man here, there's the woman here. Then they ask, we need two people from the man's family, two people from the woman's family to stand behind them. Mm. We do not want the parents to do that. Mm. The reason being that we need these two people who are neutral to serve as a voice of authority over the conscience of these people so that in case of any hate, they will be able to speak and bring about peace. So you have the person who counseled them for marriage. You have your pastor. You have whoever it is that is standing as a voice of authority mm. of, over the relationship. Then you also have professional um, psychologists and counselors who you can open up to. And then if there is even the instance of medical um, or bodily hurt, the person may need to speak to a doctor because there are times the pain that is in the body is the constant reminder mm. that something has gone wrong. And if that pain is not addressed medically for the person to be healed, it will constantly be a baggage the person will carry. Out. Having a friend that mm -hmm. you can talk to, is it the best thing? It's not wrong to talk to somebody you think is a right person. Friend? Yet a friend. We have some friends who are very right. And we have friends who are wrong. I see your question previously with what I wanted to add was how to heal yeah. your wounds. I see one thing eh, is to trust God's timing. Mm. Sometimes people must come to understand that for somebody to even hurt you or offend you in a relationship, it's part of God's plan. Do you know those who didn't who rejected you, Mr. Boatin here, those who decided not to marry him, Mr. Pastor Boatin, those who decided not to marry him, or the ladies who decided not to uh, ignore him. I've helped him mm. to meet the, 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 right the right person today. So sometimes you must trust God in your timing. 
Secondly, that you must also know that you must use your wounds as a motivation. This is the problem the generation today we have. We, we want to die with our problems. We want to die with our pain. But you know, use your pain as a stepping stone for the best life. You know, you can be hurt. You can even use it in writing a book. Mm. What if you're not a writer? Get somebody. We have, we have people who can help you in writing and you pay them. So actually, you turn your, 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 your problem. You can even turn as a, as a relationship uh, mm. uh, expert or coach. Mm. You, can, you can learn something out of it. But here's in the case, and we have people who they go through pain and they want to die with the pain. Mm. But you are here because of the pains. But everybody you've gone is different. You see, humans are such that they are the tough people and they are the people who are very vulnerable. Very true. So you meet, and there are people who were vulnerable, mm. but they became tough, tough. because of their Good. past experiences. Mm. And that's why we see some people who fall into depression mm. easier than mm. others mm. would. Mm. So for somebody who is very vulnerable, what, do you do? what you're saying mm. will not work yeah, like so, that. So, so somebody of such, mm -hmm. With what Ref said. It's what ma, ma, that person ma, ma, needs, needs somebody. Somebody. Okay. Either a good friend, a counselor. There are pastors available who are always there. Mm. We have even some people who are not necessarily men of God, but we have people who are matured enough. Pastor, you know, some, some there are men of God, some men of God, mm. not all men of God, yeah. who use your problem as a preaching topic. Oh, that, 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 one, that one happens when the man of God is not mature. And it happens. Yet, it happens when the man of God... It does happen. Is, oh, I know, it happens. But it happens when the man of God is not mature. Because, you know, uh, when you're a matured man of God and uh, you're preaching on the pulpit, somebody comes to speak to you about a private situation and then you speak about it publicly. No, but don't mention your name. But, don't yeah, use but, it as a but, but you will know it's you. Yes. So what happens is that it, it loses confidence in the pastor. Mm. Now, a time will come, people will not decide or like to come and share their... They are stories with you. And one of the secrets of every man of God is to be secretive. Mm. You need to be very secret. You need to keep things in mind. It's not everything. We have some things we hear and we keep. Mm. But if you decide to see everything out front, it's not the best. Mm. So I think that is a wrong thing. But they should get right pastors. They can talk to. They can counsel them. And I think they, they, their wounds will be healed. Right. Must you heal fully before you get into your next relationship? <laughs> nice question. You must. <laughs> now... To touch a bit on what Reverend mentioned, Rosalind, you spoke about different temperaments and different um, emotional states of people, mm. which is true. And so it's not a one size fits all mm -hmm. type of thing. And I always tell myself that when people are going through things, we should ask ourselves, if God was in a position, how, did he, how would he have dealt? Mm -hmm. Now, man was wounded and man was damaged mm. because of sin. Mm. Yet God wants to still relate with man. Mm. But the thing is, he can't relate with man in his damaged and in his wounded state. As good as God is, as perfect as he is, as powerful as he is, he cannot and he would not be able to relate fully with man in his fallen state. Mm. And so there was a need for work to be done to bring the man to a certain place or to a certain point before God could relate with man to the fullest extent. That is the reality that we all have to face when it comes to the matter of relationships. And as you pointed out, there are people that are weak and are vulnerable. There are people that are relatively um, emotionally softer. Yeah, that's right. And for such people, you would need an environment of love mm. for you to heal. One thing I tell myself is, Rosalind, you can't tell me to go naked when you are not willing to go naked. Mm -hmm. And so if such a person is sitting before a pastor or a counselor and the person, you want the person to embed him, how am I able to tell that you will be able to help me when you are not, you are not even bold and confident enough to share with me what you went through and how you've been able to come out? It is in it that a person's confidence that they will be able to receive help from whoever it is there before, mm -hmm. starts off. It is in that exposure, it is in that frank openness that assures the person that this person will be able to help me. And then an environment of love and assurance. Because if I'm coming to open up and tell you all that I have been through, the mess and the mistake I have made, if I'm going to receive judgment, if I'm going to get condemnation, 
if I'm going to get bashing as their response, I'm not going to do it. Mm. Because it is the kindness of God that leads men to repentance. That brings healing. It is not anger. And it is not, it's not, it's not um, vehement fierceness. So those two, you need time. You need an environment of love. And you need somebody who has been through what you've been through and has an understanding of what you're going through to help walk you through the phase of healing, mm. to get to that point. Mm. But a person must come to the point mm. of full healing. Yeah. Before you jump into your next relationship.